Okay, so uh, let me start. We have four classes left before uh, midterm. Uh, if I look at the previous weeks, which we have covered, well, there are a lot of boxes, but uh, technically, if I look into it, I just cover two things. One was to tell you, I will exclude the part of statistic or basic statistics, believing that you have studied two courses on statistics, and now I saw the content of the statistic one as well. So there is a very much overlap between statistic one and statistic two. And then uh, econometrics first uh, week or so was also part of covering or uh, refreshing your memories on that. So I would exclude that part. So technically we have covered two things uh, so far in, uh, in uh, econometrics. The first one was uh, to know the basis of so the first thing uh, which we covered uh, was the basis of linear regression modeling. More detail compared to what you have studied in statistic two. Uh, we started with the theory. Okay, uh, regression model kya hai? Uh, what are the assumptions associated to it? Uh, what are different parameters? How we can uh, we get the formulas which you used to use uh, during your uh, previous class uh, courses? Uh, we talked about nature of the data, uh, then we, we moved to some more detail about uh, testing the hypothesis, testing statistical significance of the uh, betas. Uh, this is more or less the course for uh, your uh, quiz as well. Then we look into the functional form of regression line uh, that uh, this was now uh, I can call from week 4 till week 6 the second part of the course which was more focused on telling you the interpretation of the betas when it's not uh, a standard regression model, both the variable or uh, both the dependent and independent variables in linear or some other form, log linear form, uh, how we can interpret that, uh, how different uh, models could be created, how we can uh, model the linear and nonlinear relation between the dependent and independent variable. So, uh, this was pretty much the basis. Uh, now, today we are going to start uh, a new topic. Now, this is a new chapter as well. This is chapter 3 in the books, uh, the, the, the textbook we are following Qualitative Explanatory Variable Regression Models. Now, this is a new topic, a new chapter. This is also the foundational part of the course which we are studying. This is also laying the foundation for the letter chapter. So uh, in this chapter, uh, there are not uh, too many topics. Uh, for the week three, we have just three topics. For week three, uh, for week seven, we have just three topics. Uh, so I'm going to tell you first, uh, what is these qualitative regression models? Uh, uh, what do we mean by that? How we can calculate these models? And obviously the interpretation part, uh, we are going to talk about uh, interactive differential dummies as well. Uh, this, is, uh, this would be a new topic, not a complicated one, but a new topic. So let me start. Let me start this new topic. Qualitative explanatory variable and uh, uh, variables regression models. So if I start with the background, till, till the previous lecture, we were discussing mainly the regression model in which the dependent and independent variables were measured through ratio scale or they were quantitative in nature. For example, the variables such as income, output, labor, capital, you can recall all the models which you have estimated. Uh, these models were sometimes you were regressing labor and capital, uh, output on labor and capital, sometimes you were looking into the GDP growth rate, sometimes you were looking with some wage determination. And all these models has the dependent variable quantitative and also independent variable quantitative. So, uh, and we were, we were focused on the interpretation most of the time. Estimation was easy uh, due to the software. And then we were uh, focused on the uh, interpretation part, that how we can interpret these quantitative variables. So that was uh, initial uh, initial stage. Now, we, we are adding more to it. And... In this week and in the next week, we are going to uh, have uh, deal with models that include qualitative 
explanatory variable qualitative explanatory variable and uh, these variable could be gender race union or affiliation just to mention a few uh, now adding these as an explanatory variable kind of pose some challenge for interpretation it uh, the interpretation of qualitative model in the regression model is slightly different the estimation is same you estimate the betas by the same way you run a normal regression which you used to do uh, in all these uh, uh, previous weeks uh, but the interpretation when you add a qualitative variable in the explanatory variable become slightly different we are going to learn that uh, i'm just focusing on qualitative explanatory variable so this whole chapter is based on uh, different versions of qualitative variable being introduced in explanatory variable so then uh, the, the four classes we are going to have before me will be focused on that topic we for time being will be still considering dependent variable or using dependent variable being quantitative in nature a variable which is measured in ratio scale however after me we are going to study some topics which will cover a model when we have the dependent variable also as a qualitative variable that's a bit different when you have the dependent variable quantitative uh, qualitative variable so for uh, for for time being we are just focusing on uh, the, the regression model in which explanatory variable will be qualitative in nature later on we will see a dependent variable also be quantitative for time being i will ignore that so uh, let me start qualitative variables i think you are familiar with qualitative variable we when started the course we talked about uh, the types of variable being divided into two major groups qualitative and quantitative and then uh, we also further decompose it into discrete and continuous and then we further uh, talk about the scale of measuring these variables and we uh, uh, introduce four scales I, i'm sure you you know that so starting with qualitative variables are nominal scale variable which have no particular numerical value so qualitative variables is the name indicate we can't measure it quantitatively we use nominal scale for measuring these variable now nominal scale you are familiar with the nominal scale uh, so qualitative variables are nominal scale variable nominal scale refers to when you just name the categories without any measurement for the categories for example a gender male or female so you just put a variable uh, as 1 or 0 for male or female uh, i have it here uh, uh, a slight example that will make it more clear for example when we can uh, we can use a dummy variable for uh, for the gender for example uh, normally we say uh, qualitative variable are not measurable however we quantify these variable by using dummy variables or creation of dummy variables i already uh, at a certain point in time in past uh, did told uh, told you that uh uh how can we uh, uh or what is dummy variable dummy variable is a variable which has two possible value either 0 or 1 so any variable that have a, a value 0 or 1 we call that variable a dummy variable so we say qualitative variable are not measurable quantitatively however we use dummy variable to quantify these variables for example if we want to use a gender uh, variable in our model now gender is not quantifiable however we use a dummy variable for it and we say that when a dummy variable have a zero value we mean that the attribute which we want to measure or mention is not present and when we say one it means that that attributes are present so if it's a gender here i i i must have an example for example a variable denoting gender can be quantified as female equal to 1 and male equal to 0 or vice versa you can reverse that order it's not like if i said it here on this slide that male should be 0 and female should be 1 it should be the case you can reverse the order it wouldn't affect anything it wouldn't affect your estimation result either you will see that later it's just the notation the way you want to interpret all you want to say is the attribute gender has been represented by 1 or 0 absence or presence or the reverse order wouldn't make a difference so keep that in mind that changing the category order wouldn't affect anything it would affect the interpretation but then you should know what is representing one the rest the result would be the same so 
डमी वेरिएबल आर आर सो कॉल्ड इंडिकेटर वेरिएबल कैटेगोरियल वेरिएबल एंड क्वालिटेटिव वेरिएबल सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट नेम्स फॉर इट डमी वेरिएबल क्वालिटेटिव वेरिएबल कैटेगोरियल वेरिएबल वेन यू लुक इन टू इन इकोनोमेट्रिक लिटरेचर यू लुक इन टू डिफरेंट बुक्स सो द मॉडल विच हैज द डिपेंडेंट नॉट इंडिपेंडेंट द डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल एज क्वालिटेटिव वेरिएबल विच वी गोन स्टडी आफ्टर मेड normally they call these models categorical categorical data model or uh, qualitative data models they call the uh, these models uh, these are different models so that's why we are ignoring it for time being we at this point in time are just focused on qualitative explanatory variable not qualitative dependent variable so y variable is still quantitative only x variables are uh, explanatory variable so we are going to uh, uh, going to talk about these variables uh so here are some examples uh, of the qualitative variable gender race color religion nationality geographic region party affiliation political upheaval so, well you can name anything which you can't measure quantitatively uh being the student of management sciences or bba uh you will be more confronting the uh, qualitative variable rather than quantitative variable Uh, uh if you are doing something with finance then most probably you will be confronted with quantitative variable but if you are focus on quantitative analysis associated with for example hr or general management then most of the time you will be confronted with the uh, uh, qualitative variable for example uh, i can just give you some example for example employee motivation employee motivation so how you want to measure that employer motivation like if you want to say uh, let's say uh, higher salary could motivate the employers now salary could be measured quantitatively but what about the motivation you can take some scale for example 1 to 5 scale and you can measure it but it's still a kind of qualitative variable you can't use ratio or ratio or uh, 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 what is the other one ratio and nominal ordinal ordinal nominal you can use these one but not the ratio and the other one fourth one interval. interval 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 and ratio is difficult to be used for qual, qual, uh, qualitative variable so now the problems associated with dummy variables there are number of issues when you introduce dummy variables uh, the very famous one is called uh, dummy variable trap uh, this is pretty easy to understand uh, well the uh, the language may be a bit complicated but in simple words if you have m categories to represent you have to introduce m minus 1 dummy variable in your model let's say i have a variable gender which has two categories 0 and 1 or you can say i have two categories gender being represented by either being male or female so i have to use one dummy variable to represent these two categories let's say i have another variable Uh, i may have here uh, another example this is for the gender i could uh, let me introduce another one which i call it uh, i will i will discuss all the points by the way so another one could be political affiliation let's say i say in pakistan we have just three political parties the three big one so you have three categories three major parties so you have three categories and you want to see some uh, do want to do some analysis related to the person political affiliation then you can use two dummy variables to represent that three categories of uh, uh, political affiliation so all what i i want to emphasize is if you have m categories you have to use m minus 1 dummy variable but that condition hold when you are using intercept term in the model when you are estimating a model uh, in previews you have seen it it by default take the term c which is for the constant so if a constant is there and you have m categories then you have to use m minus 1 dummy variable but if a constant is not there you can still use m categories so either you have to drop a constant or you have to reduce one category if you don't do that you confront with a problem which we call dummy variable trap and uh, dummy variable trap uh, uh, refers to a case of perfect multi collinearity among your exponential variable I will, I will i will show you that how it works but uh so as i said gender has only two category so we introduce only one dummy variable for gender either uh, male or female you can use 0 or 1 for male or female or 
female and male it depends on you how you 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 put it yes question there bolen bolen ab bolen sir do we have to add these dummy variables in our model or do yes. we have to replace yes. them yes. by the original variables you have to put that dummy variable uh, look uh, let's say uh, i'm going to show you example we in past saw an example of like wage, wage I, i will tell you. wage determination i i got your question so that's why i'm uh, cutting it uh, wage determination we saw model wage determination wage is function of number of things so you had one variable there as gender so gender could be represented by either male or female uh, so you you put again uh, value 1 0 0 depending upon if the respondent is male or female and then you add that in your regression model if you recall i show you the interpretation of experience and education i never discuss the interpretation of gender union non white in that model all these variable were dummy variable in that model today we going to learn how to interpret these oh, as well and so what if uh, the independent variable has more scales than 0 and 1 then you create more uh, more more categories for example the case of uh, let 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 me show you the third one for example we have that's a very uh, important question if we have more than two categories of a model, uh, of a variable for example let's say we ask people about their political affiliation and there were three categories on that written here I wouldn't mention it being uh, the nature of the problem so uh, there are three option a b and c and now you want to create dummy variables for that so you had two option the first option you create one dummy for political party a one for political party 2 and you make the third one zero irrespective of which one you want to make zero wouldn't make a difference let's say the first one you make zero the second one one the third one two so you call it d1 d2 d3 variable uh, d3 ko to zaruri nahi hai so you just a two variable d1 and d2 you make uh, two categories represented and the third one is automatically zero. you you ah, uh, you, you will just drop it for example if i write political party a b and c so if a person is from political party a i will make this one this two zero if it's from b so this is one this is zero this is zero if it's from c this all is zero you can create a third variable which make this one one that's that's okay but when you want to run a model you're going to use only two of these three variables if you want to include intercept in your model if you want to drop the intercept then you can use all these three and if you don't do that you fall in a problem which is called dummy variable trap you had two option you created these dummy variable i would call it d1 d2 and d3 so you had two option to include this in your model in regression model the first one is you write it as function of constant other x variable d1 and d2 or you can do f and x all x variable i would put a small axis and then d1 d2 d3 so these two options you can go by either of it both are okay as long as you take care if you have c you should reduce 1d if you have uh, no c you can include all these three so if you don't do that you fall in a problem which we call dummy variable trap now what is dummy variable trap uh, dummy variable trap refers to a condition when you are because of adding all categories of uh, dummy variable you are dummy variable perfectly correlate with one another the category so uh, till now what i talked about is uh, that we are going to deal now with models in which explanatory variables are qualitative in nature and qualitative variable are represented by dummy variables dummy variable refers to those variable which has zero one values zero for presence of some uh, absence of some quali uh, qualities or, uh, or uh, uh, absence of or presence of it doesn't matter but you differentiate between the qualities or the uh, attributes by zero and one and then uh, and then we said that uh, there is a problem associated with uh, dummy variables and that's dummy variable trap 
and dummy variable trap could be avoided by one of the two approaches either you use all the dummy categories with dropping the constant term or you include the constant term in your regression model and uh, drop one of the dummy variable category so that was the theory is this our choice or yes this is your choice it wouldn't make a difference but uh, my recommendation would be for all of you whenever you do these to avoid dummy variable trap always drop one dummy category rather than this intercept use this this, this approach the first one use this one Sorry? Do you use one if it's present zero if it's not? Yes. Well, this interpretation, it's your choice. You can make one for absence and zero for uh, presence, or you can it, uh, reverse it. It wouldn't make any difference. But when you are estimating the model, you have two options. The first option is include the constant and all dummy categories. Uh, sorry, one, uh, one less dummy category. So that's the one approach of uh, uh, estimating these regression models. The other is include all dummy categories and drop the constant. So I'm saying, let's settle down for the first one. The reason is the interpretation of this is very easy compared to this one. This will slightly complicate. We will see. Uh, so then another concept. So let me write it down on board to tell you dummy variable. Then dummy variable trap. And now the third one is reference category. Now, by reference category, this is uh, again important with the qualitative data. We use a reference category. Whichever attribute you make or equal to zero, we call that category or that attribute as reference category. So, for example, if you make male in gender variable zero, so we will call male a reference category. So in that case, C was uh, the reference, right? The yes. In that case, when you add the C in it, the C become the reference, but uh, uh, or drop, sorry, when you drop it. But I would advise you just stick to the first approach. I will just cut this one. Stick the first one. That's very easy to interpretation. So I make here, let's say there were three party, party A, B, and C. So C is not here. So C become the reference category. So whichever indicator you drop or make equal to zero that become the reference category you compare the rest with it for interpretation purpose so that's why we call it a reference category all comparison are made in relation to the reference category so when you interpret the coefficient you say this thing increase that much compared to the reference category male has a higher salary compared to the female political party a is more popular compared to political party c or vice versa, depending upon what your reference category is. So, if there are several dummy variables, you must keep track of the reference category, otherwise it will be difficult to interpret the result. This is also important. You may have more than two or three qualitative variables in your regression model. So then for every qualitative variable, you could have multiple dummy variables. So you have to keep track of every reference category. Because that would be important for interpretation. So, dummy variable, dummy variable trap, then the reference point, then the reference point of the multiple number of variables being included in X variable. Because when you have a regression model, you don't have just one qualitative variable, you may have multiple uh, qualitative variables. So you have to keep track of every uh, qualitative variable and its reference category. Because it would be required for the interpretation. So the points which you have to keep in mind, if there is an intercept term in the regression model, the number of dummy variable must be one less than the number of classification of each qualitative variable, or the same, the categories should be uh, uh, less than one, whatever the number of categories are. If you drop the common intercept from the model, you can have as many dummy variable as the number of categories in the dummy variable. That's the second approach I wrote on the board, uh, but I would still advise you to use the first one. Uh, the coefficient of a dummy variable must always be interpreted in the relation to the reference category. So now you are familiar with reference category. Whatever interpretation you do for the uh, dummy variable, it should be in relation to the reference category. Can you give an example? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, uh, very shortly. Very shortly. I will give you an example. Uh, 
Right away, I can tell you about the wage regression we did. I'm going to give you the same uh, data, the same model you have to estimate and then you interpret. Uh, for example, if I want to compare, uh, going to the example, this one. So let's say I make this party as a reference, political party as a reference. So I, I can interpret the coefficient, let's say, I look into the popularity of the three parties. So I can say the popularity of uh, party first one is that much more than this one or that much less than this reference category. So that becomes the interpretation. Category, this one is that much higher than the reference. This one is that much lower than the reference depending upon the size and the uh, sign of the coefficient. So you can do it. This is very powerful, uh, I could say, the plugins or the strength of the regression model that it helped you to model so many things. I will give you some examples from my own PhD research work as well. I, I use it very effectively in my, my thesis. Uh, so dummy variables. Okay, so that was the second one. If you drop the intercept, so then you can use as many uh, dummy variables as the number of categories are and always compare the interpretation of dummy variable with respect to the reference category. Then we say dummy variable can interact with quantitative regressor as well with uh, quantitative uh, qualitative regressor. What does it mean? Sometimes you can create a new dummy variable by multiplying a dummy variable with quantitative variable. Now, what kind of help it can do? For example, I will go back and let's say number of votes the party gets is function of so many things. We can add gender, we can add maybe parties, types of parties or political parties affiliation. So now gender is a qualitative variable and parties is also a qualitative variable with dummies. So maybe and you could have income level. You could have education level, all these affect your voting behavior. So what I want to say that the votes parties get depends on number of things such as the education of the voter, their uh, maybe age, income, maybe their affiliation with the party. Maybe it also that someone is affiliated with something, someone and put vote to another one. So all these may affect the number of votes a party gets. So now I have these to income and education quantitative variable and gender and parties affiliation qualitative variable. So when I run the model, I could get if income increase, number of votes increase or decrease for a particular party, if education increase or decrease, again number of votes increase or decrease for a particular party, if it's a male, they are voting more to a, polit a political party compared to female when I compare it with a reference category. If someone is affiliated with party A, they can vote more or less compared to party C. So all these interpretations are okay. But sometimes you are confronted, you are interested that okay, if someone is female and someone is associated with party, let's say party B, then how I can see that it changed? In a way, I want to combine two things. Or if it's a female and her income increase, what happens? Or if it's a female and her education increase by one year, what happens? Or if it's a male, his education increase by one year, how it affects? So then we create a new variable, which we call introduction variable. I don't know if this tell you or give you a good example. I can give you one example from my own research that may give you some better ideas. What I did was I estimated the travel demand, like how much people travel when weather condition changes. So what I did was I had a number of trips, like the number of trips being taken by car, by bicycle, by so many things. And I, may, uh, I fun make it function of temperature, temperature change, trips may increase or decrease. Then you can say rain. Then you can say wind, in Europe this is a big thing, and so many more variables. What I can do is, let's say I'm interested in something when it's 
rain and windy. This coefficient will tell me just about the rain. This coefficient will tell me about the wind. But what about when it's rain and wind? So what I would do, I would create a new variable which I would call rain and wind. And the coefficient of this will tell me if it's rain and, uh, rain and windy. So how it's going to affect the number of So what I wanted to say, let me, let me rephrase it in more detail. When temperature change, number of trips change, keeping rain and wind constant. That's how you interpret it, partial elasticity or partial effect. When rain changes, how much trips change, keeping temperature and wind constant, and so on. But now I'm saying, when rain and wind change, or when rain and wind happens, what happens to the number of trips, keeping temperature constant? So that's a new information. That's an additional information. So this is called interactive terms. So we will never, we will not find how much heat of them is affecting. We do. Separately. We do here. That was already available. When you are using it as a separate, that gives you individual effect. But sometimes you are interested to combine two things. Because when I use it as a separate, it is you. If I'm looking at impact of temperature, so it's just the temperature. Keeping all other variables constant. So, but we may be interested to change two things or three things. Temperature, now this is interesting as well. Temperature you measure how? In degree centigrade. You use like one degree centigrade, two degree centigrade and so on. And it go to the minus scale as well. But temperature move non-linearly. Like 10 degree change below zero centigrade is different than the 10 degree change in plus scale. Let's say you can't in a way uh, say that the people will respond for 10, per 10 scale change in temperature from 10 to 20 or 20 to 30 as they will respond from 0 to minus 10 and minus 10 to minus 20. So you can't say that temperature is linearly related with number of trees. I hope you got my point. It's, it will become a more technical now. <laughs> as in, as in, uh, you can't combine you can, you can. Just you, you have to create a variable, temperature and rain, multiply it. Like, I was missing the snow data. The snow data was missing. So what I did was, I created a, a loose proxy for that. And I took the temperature with below zero centigrade, and I multiplied it with rain. Snow, up to some extent. Not the perfect measure, but better than not having it. Gee. You can you can create interactive variable with dummies, both being dummy. Mm -hmm. You can create one explanatory variable being quantitative, the other qualitative. You can have both quantitative. So interaction could be created from any variable. Yes, sir. Will we use a value in rain multiply the wind or will we use one or zero to show that in either? Yes, you, it depends. It depends whichever variable you have. For example, if I want to create wind and rain, so I would see whatever the wind column is and whatever the rain column is. I will just multiply it so I get a wind and rain combination. So our dummy variable will be rain multiply by wind. Yes. So for all the uh, quantitative variables, we will multiply the values. Yes, you just multiply the two columns. You generate a new variable, multiply the two columns. Just like you created a variable taking log. It depends if I marry it as a dummy variable. If I, I use it as a continuous variable, I use these uh, with the dummy variables because I believe that in my case, this and this relation between the dependent and independent variable is non-linear. So in the previous lecture, I did tell you that the variable dependent and independent can be linked linearly or non-linearly. In linear case, you can you can use it as a uh, wind. In non-linear, you can use it as a wind and wind square, or you can use dummies as well. You can create dummies for, for example, if there is a wind for this much strength, you can create a dummy variable one. If the wind is of that strength, it's one, otherwise zero. You can create another dummy variable and so on. So I did the same for temperature as well. Like for temperature scale, if temperature is between zero and 10, so I have dummy one. If temperature is between 10 and 20, I have dummy two. 
So there are different way of modeling it. At this stage, what you have to learn is how to model the linear, non-linear relation, how to introduce the dummies in it, and then how it will inter uh, affect your interpretation. So the rain and wind combined would come under the quantitative category. It depends. If you are measuring wind as a quantitative variable, for example, wind is measured in uh, meter per square, uh, uh, meter per kilometer, or uh, kilometer joski or kithe, kithe strength se wind chal rahi hai. So if you are measuring quantitatively, yes, it would create a quantitative variable, a new quantitative variable. But if you are measuring it as a dummy variable, it would create a dummy variable. So it depends how you are measuring it. Uh, in this particular context, uh, in the topic context, uh, I went far away from the uh, from the slide which I was discussing. So coming back to that, what I wanted to emphasize was that you can create a new variable, a new dummy variable by interaction of dummy with the other variables in your model. And that gives you new information about your model. You're going to do that uh, uh, maybe today or tomorrow class. And you will see by yourself that how it reveals new information or new uh, uh, things from your data. At the end of the day, you are getting more and more info from your data through these models. So if a model has several qualitative variables with several categories, introduction of dummy for all the combination can consume a large number of degree of freedom. This is important as well. Let's say I have 100 observation and I introduce 120 dummies, I would not be able to calculate my model. There will be a problem of the, uh, of the degree of freedom. I should have n minus 1 by maximum, n minus 1 uh, coefficient, which I want to estimate. Like if I have, uh, for example, this model, these three variables only, so I should have at least four observations to estimate. And so on. So if I want to increase the estimated coefficient in my data, I should have more and more observation in my data. If I don't, either I wouldn't be able to calculate my model or my result wouldn't be trust, uh, uh, I wouldn't be getting statistically significant, the standard error would be higher, uh, I wouldn't have much variation in my data. So it creates a problem. Um, so if, if, like, there are more than three, like, let's just, there are 10 variables. So if you start with the dummy variable, there would be a lot of combinations of two or three or four. You, you, don't in, you normally are not interested in all, first answer to your question, you are not interested in all kind of interactions. First. Secondly, it's not necessary that all of your interaction terms are statistically significant. So then you can drop that from your model, from your final model. You can add, you can check if it's statistically significant, you keep it. If not, you drop it because it's not linked. And then you have to finalize your model in search of finding the best model. You keep adding on the variable, you check your statistical significance. So if it's statistically significant, you keep it in the model. If not, you drop it because uh, it's just, uh, you, you think it was linked, but data doesn't support it, so it's no need. So, interpretation of dummy variables. Now, as I told you, dummy coefficients are often called differential intercept dummies, for they show the differences in the intercept values of the category uh, that gets the value of one as compared to the reference category. It, coming back to the initial discussion, Coming back to the initial discussion, I told you that we define a reference category. So when we define a reference category, the dummy variables interpretation is linked with that reference category. And when you interpret it, it is compared to reference category, it defines a different slope uh, intercept parameter. You say like when you use, when we used to define a regression line for X and Y variable, we used to draw it like this with a positive intercept. But when we use the dummy variable, we are kind of think about two curves, one for male, one for female. Sorry. So it's a kind of like two different curves with the same slope, but different intercept. So when you add a dummy variable, it's a kind of like you are using a different intercept parameter. Or it's a kind of like uh, defining a different regression line with the same slope, but different intercept when you use uh, uh, these dummy variable. So that's why we also call it differential intercept dummies. The common intercept value refers to all those categories that make uh, uh, a value of zero. Again, uh, 
The reference category, it's called common intercept. It, it value uh, is zero for all uh, the other uh, categories. Now, this was uh, from my side. Now, your side uh, to, to check, to know Let me go back to that one example which we discussed in chapter one, wage rate determination. I'm sure uh, you know that uh, example. There were over hourly wage of around 1,300 persons from U.S. population survey, it was from March 1995. Huh? Variables. There were there were five or six variables: wage, female, non-white, union, education, experience. So you can see here some variables are qualitative in nature, pure qualitative in nature, and we use dummies for that. You can clearly identify female, non-white, and union. Gender being one for female and zero for male. Non-white race variable, quoted for one for non-white, zero for white. Union, a person being member of union, quoted as one. Not member of union, quoted as zero. So all these are dummy variables, and then you have wage. That's a quantitative variable because it's measured in dollars. Then you have education and experience, also number of years. Uh, these are also uh, quantitative variables, my year in number of years would have any value. Uh, so we have to estimate a model, wage is equal to B1 plus B2 female plus B3 non-white plus B4 union plus B5 education plus B6 experience and the error term. So now we did that in past. You didn't calculate it, I believe. I just show you the results of that while telling you when uh, you have to interpret uh, the uh, coefficient of linear regression model. I did show you the results of this model, but we never estimated it. So today you're going to estimate it, and then you have to tell me. I just rewrote that the, uh, the data is on your LMS. Estimate this model and go for the interpretation of the three dummy variables plus the two uh, quantitative variables. So your time starts. All the variables, uh, who, who variable, uh, who, uh, which are not written in the model, just ignore that. Asal mein, uh, egonometric books are quantitative in nature, so the author when write books, they do share the data sets as well. Uh, normally, whenever I give you the data set, I used to remove the irrelevant variable which are not required for the model. So today I learn one more thing. It may be possible that you have the data with so many variables. But it is not necessary that you have to use each and every variable or each and every variable is relevant for your model. You have to think for that. So here, uh, there are two more variables I believe in your model which is not mentioned here. Just ignore that. One is age, the other is wind. So that wind stands for those workers who are paid on uh, hourly basis and those who are not paid for hourly basis. It's also a dummy variable. Ignore that one. It's not added in the model, so ignore it. So it's not necessary that you are given thousand variable and you add all of them uh, into a model. So let me show you in views how we can estimate that wage determination model. First of all, I will need to import the data. So once I have the data in my uh, eViews file, all I have to do is to select the dependent variable which is wage and I have to regress then on the three variables which are uh, dummy in nature that was female and then uh, uh, union and a non-white so first let me get the non-white and then I take the union non-white and then the union and then the two quantitative variable which was education and experience so I open these as a equation I click OK and I run the model and this is the result. The dependent variable is wage as you can see here written on the top and the independent variable are female, non-white and union. These three are the uh, dummy variable and we have education and experience the two quantitative variable. Their coefficients are given, their standard error are given, their t-statistics and p-probability values. This is the results you should get. Now, there were some quantitative variables, some qualitative variables, as I told you, we use dummy variable. So there was one question which I want to make clear, uh, uh, may create troubles. Dummy variable 
the data one zero just is the the data you have. When you get the coefficient, it's not necessary or it's not a compulsion that the coefficient will be zero one. No, when we mean dummy variable can have a value zero one, we mean the measurement part. When you estimate a model, the coefficient could have any value. It could have a plus value. It could have a minus value. So uh, that this should be clear. So first we start with the easy part, which we have already discussed so many times. Let's say I want to interpret the coefficient of education. What does it mean? Uh, by 1.37. So education was measured in number of years. So you say one unit change in education bring. 1.37 unit change in wage, which was the dependent variable. That was the basic interpretation. Then we say that education is measured in number of years and wage is measured in dollars. So we say one year increase in education brings 1.37 dollar increase in wage on average, keeping gender, non-white, union, and all these constant. That is the the full interpretation. That was for the quantitative variable okay so that was for education similarly for experience one year increase in experience would increase the wage by 0.16 dollar per hour so that was what we have learned now the female so let me go back to the theory part i told you that whenever you use a dummy variable there is a reference category so you have to keep in mind the reference category and when you have to interpret the coefficient you will interpret it with the uh, with the reference to the reference category so when you say this is a negative sign this is the indication that whatever here the reference category is this variable or this uh, is showing the lesser value than the reference category so we were using if you recall female as one so we got female getting lesser than male if we would have used male as one this value would have been positive of course and then you would say male getting more than female it's the same thing female getting less than male or male getting more than female it's the two different ways so that's why when i was telling that you could use one for male or one for female it wouldn't make any difference only the thori ball interpretation change you have to keep track what is zero what is one at a certain stage you have to but at this stage when you get a secondary data and you are asked to run a model then you will you will just need to know what is zero what is one and you compare one with the zero category but if you have to define it by yourself it's up to you for example when i was giving the example of this political affiliation it's up to you it's a freedom you want to make ah uh, if you may if you have to define it yourself you have to generate a variable there it's a slightly complex at this stage no at this stage no but at a later stage you have to uh if you look at it non white was one look at the wage 1.5 with a negative sign so what does it mean so not a wage gets from 1.5 dollars less than a wage excellent that's it keeping all other constant then <coughs> union So you say if you are a member of union, normally you would expect a higher salary. Why? Because the bargaining power of you would be higher compared to someone who is not part of a union. You can look for a higher salary. So in general, if you are a member of a union, you are getting slightly higher. Now, if you look at the value, one point zero nine, it's not that high, but still it do matter. One dollar and one point zero nine dollar technically is not very big difference, but it's still there. Similarly, non-white and white, one point five and one dollar, not very big difference, but still a fifty cent difference per hour. Similarly, female, now three dollar and one dollar is a big difference per per hour. So again, uh, linking these with the standard overall statistical significance, individual statistical significance of the variables, I ignore that part. whenever you run a model you have to check for overall statistical significance the f stat statistic value the individual st uh, significance this t value now if you look at the p values of the individual variables you can see here the value is not all zeros you have it what does it mean 
It's statistically significant at 3%. We are still okay because it's below 5%. This one is yeah, statistically significant at 0.02%. So it's still okay. But we will be getting variables with the p values greater than 5%. So in that case, it would be statistically not significant, which means we would not be claiming that thing, whatever that coefficient represents, because we believe that it's statistically not significant or it came by chance.